Yo, so what's good, fam? It's your man, Jay. It's June 9th, 2021. It's Wednesday, New Comic Book Wednesday. And guess where I am? Yo, so what's good, fam? It's your man, Jay, back with another episode of Evolutionary Comics. A little while ago, you guys caught me going into uh, Emerald City, my local comic book shop, and another segment of What's In My Bag. Let's run through this real quick. Make this a quick video as well. This is the, the proverbial bag. Get rid of that. And as you see, I'm pulling it right out of the bag, so there's not going to be any real order to this. I'm just going to tell you the, you know, the publisher, where it came from in the title, just so you guys can see what I picked up. I am going to sort it because I picked up multiple copies of certain things. And uh, we'll do that real quick. This is the part where we speed around. All right, so in case you missed the last video, I just put this up here. This is my Luke Cage number two hero for hire. And this is the first appearance of Claire Temple, which is something that was on my wanted list. It wasn't in my top 10 most wanted, but it was on my wanted list. This is looking like it's probably about, you know, maybe a five at the most as far as grading. I'm not sure. Uh, the cover is almost detached and there's a little hole right there. So I am going to be looking to upgrade this copy in the future. But I saw it, you know, it was really, really good price as you see. So that's why I picked that up. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. I picked this one up from Nerd Out Comics and that's in St. Petersburg. I believe it's off 5th Fifth, uh, Fifth Avenue or 5th Street, one of those two. But, you know, look it up, check it out. You know, they got some good, some good uh, back issue books. And a lot of nice variants there as well. So, you know, it might be a spot that if you're in the area that you might want to check out as well. All right. So first up for this week's What's in My Bag. This is uh, DC Comics Detective Comics 1037. And this is the cardstock variant. And this is a beautiful cover. This is a really nice cover. I like this cover. I like how the, uh, the yellow hue from like the, it looks like they may be, in a parking garage or you know in a somewhere underground but that's a real dope cover I like that and it's Batman and I forget uh, his, his new sidekicks name but that's who's on the cover next up is DC's Future State and this is Future State Gotham number two and apparently the Red Hood is uh, working for um, working for somebody who's trying to get rid of all the masks in Gotham um, as part of that Future State series that's going on and that's what this one is about. This is also a cardstock variant. Pretty nice cover. There's multiple uh, covers. Maybe while I'm going along with this I'm gonna pop up a different multiple covers that uh, that's available for you if you want to check it out but you know I'm gonna show you what I got real quick. Next up is DC Comics Batman Urban Legends and this is issue four and uh, the Red Hood is you know along with Batman again and this time they are uh, working together as opposed to kind of battling each other something happens and the Red Hood really really needs Batman and um, he tells the Oracle you know get Batman and he's like you know Batman is like you know you know tell him I'm doing something I'll get there when I can and then the Oracle tells him no he asked for you so they let that lets you know that it was something serious if he's asking for Batman's help which he never ever ever does so next up is DC Young Animals number 12 of Far Sector 
And this is written by N.K. Jemison, and the artwork is by Jamal Campbell. Y'all check both of them out. Um, great writer, great artist. And this is the last issue of this story arc, so not sure where it's going to go. I know that uh, Green Lantern Joe Mullen is actually part of uh, the Green Lantern series now, so she was in that with um, Team Lantern as well. So you can check her out there. Check this one out. It's going to be coming out in trade soon, but this is issue 12. And I think this is last up for DC Comics. And this is the Joker number four. And I like this cover. They, there's a couple of different covers out. This is Bane's daughter. And um, they're still trying to figure out if she's going to be a good guy or a bad guy or what's going to be her, her issue. Um, this issue also features a punchline in it as well. And Jim Gordon has been on the hunt for, uh, for the Joker. And he's been like uh, he's out to kill him. But once he catches up to him, he finds out that there's a deeper story going along and the Joker has proof to show him. And it kind of makes Jim hesitate a little bit. So now they're trying to find out who the true enemy is and, you know, maybe the Joker needs Jim Gordon's help or vice versa. But that's what's going on with that one. This is Strange Academy by Marvel, number 11. And uh, this is the character covers that they've been doing. So I have to catch up on this one. I haven't been um, that deep into the series. I think I'm like at number six or seven. And as you see, they're on 11. So I got to do some catching up with that one. Uh, there is another cover. Um, and I think it's uh, Who Killed Thoth. And that's one of the another one of the characters, the big ice, ice character. So um, they're trying to figure out what happened to him. And, you know, I guess there's going to be a mystery involved with that. Next up is Children of the Atom, number four. And this is by Vita Ayala and Paco Medina. And there's a lot of new characters in this. A lot of new character appearances that popped up when this, uh, when this series started. Um, it's a pretty good series so far. I've been reading it. Um, it's all over the place, really. They're, they're trying to you know find their way, trying to get some of the teams to crack off or, you know, the... the X-Men or Mutant Island or whatever and um yeah it's like I say it's been good I don't have a clue on who this guy is yet so I guess when I read the issue I'll find out all right so next up we have Geiger number three and uh this is by Image Comics it is written by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank and I've been loving this story as well this is um basically it's po post-apocalyptic and the radiation has you know decimated the earth and there are survivors and there's one particular guy who survived it um, and he was affected by the radiation. That's ultimately turned him into somewhat of a superhero and uh, he has another group of people that are out to get him. They're pissed off with him. They're trying to, you know, take his powers and he's out trying to protect people that are out on their own. So it's been a real good series as well. I'm going to let you guys, you know, check out some of the artwork real quick. And you see that there's wolves with two heads, so that um that radioactivity has definitely affected the rest of the earth. And at this point, he's uh, these two little girls escape from some bad guys, and uh, he's helping them out as well. So we're gonna see what happens with them. But there's multiple covers out for this one as well. A lot of dope covers. There's gonna be like some glow in the dark covers and stuff like that. I only picked up this one because, you know, it was only, oh, I only wanted this one. I'll say that. Um, next up from Aftershock Comics is Bunny Mask, number one. And this is the Adlard variant, 1 in 15 variant. And this is the only one that, uh, the only variant that I saw of this one. I just grabbed this one because I thought the cover was dope and it is the number one. So, a lot of times we bypass stuff, you know, but it's, if you're a real collector, you're going to pick up some of those number ones, even though you may not have a, a deep interest in it. But I just thought it was something that was going to be worth picking up. Um, it's written by Paul Tobin, and the artwork is by Andrea Muti. And it's funny because when um, my, my buddy Frank at Emerald City Comics, he was like, check it out, you know, at least at least look at the first page. So I flip over and I look at the first page and it is an individual, I don't know who it is, but they're getting their teeth chiseled while they're awake. 
And if anybody has ever been to the dentist, because I don't know about anybody else, I hate going to the dentist. But if you ever, if you're ever at the dentist and they're doing, you know, dental work and that metal hits your teeth, regardless, Novocaine or whatever, sometimes you still feel it. And this person is, is getting their teeth chiseled. So that, that's a pretty wicked thing to do. But yeah, so this, I don't know how the rest of the story goes, but I, I did take a peek and I did see that there's some killing going on. Couple that with the teeth chiseling thing, it's kind of eerie, but. All right, next up is from Black Mask, and this is Alice in Leatherland, number three. And I know I said I wasn't gonna pick this up and this was probably gonna drop off my, my pull list, but um, when I did my two in review, check that segment out that just came out earlier this morning. Um, but this one, it, it, like I said, it's worth, you know, maybe worth another peek because the story did interest me. I just have, you know, so much other stuff that's in my pull list that I only wanted to, you know, I wanted to cut it down a little bit. But I am still intrigued by the story and I do want to give it, you know, one more chance. So we'll see if this, uh, this issue number three is a make it or break it. On the back, um, side note from Black Mask is new comic book White. And this was supposed to come out today as well. Uh, my comic book, uh, and this was supposed to come out today as well. But um, my comic book shop did not get any copies. They, uh, I guess they said something about there was an allocation for certain shops. There's only 2,500 of these particular comic books printed in the United States across the board. Um, and I was smart enough to order some as well. So I ordered a couple and hopefully I get them. Hopefully I'll get some kind of confirmation within the next day or two that, um, that they are ordered and they're on the way. But my comic book shop didn't get it, but I'm anxious to get this because um, this is going to be a big issue. This is, the, this is the second series from the comic book Black that is also done by Black Mask. So, you know, of course it's black then white. It looks really interesting. I'm not going to tell you guys too much about it right now um, until I get confirmation that I got it coming and then I'll do another uh, video on it. So, but yeah, so Alice in Leatherland issue three is, is hanging out still. There's still, it's still in my pool list. All right, next up from Boom Studios. Uh, this is issue number four of Proctor Valley Road. And this is definitely, definitely a comic book that I love. It's written by Grant Morrison and uh, the artwork is by Alex Child. I'm actually, I'm loving this book. It's, it's The storyline is great. I'm still caught up in trying to figure out exactly, just like the characters are trying to figure out exactly what's going on with this stretch of road. Um, there's horror stories about it. There's been a lot of crazy things going on and they've been seeing some monsters pop up and they're trying to figure it all out at the same time while trying to find some of their missing uh, classmates from their school and without getting arrested because the police are thinking that they had something to do with the disappearance. They're trying to prove that they didn't by finding them and all at the same time trying to find the mystery of Proctor Valley Road. I'm going to show you guys the artwork real quick and yeah already it's showing showing some ghosts in there so apparently they've come in contact with some uh some apparitions and you know they're they're having conversations so maybe they're finding out a little bit more about what's going on proctor valley road but yeah that's pretty dope all right so this is uh the variant cover from proctor valley road Actually, this is the unlockable variant. Um, there was only one and I was lucky enough to get in and pick this up. And I don't know, this little boy, he hasn't been a part of the story. So I guess he's going to be introduced into this series. But I really thought that this was a really dope cover. It's a virgin cover, as you see. A virgin variant. And that's what's up. So this is the unlockable virgin variant of Proctor Valley Road number four. And last but not least on my list is my pick of the month so far. But um, this is from Boom Studios. This is Eve. This is the number two issue. It's by Victor Laval and uh, Jo Ming Jiang and uh, Brittany Peer. And this has been a great story. It's, uh, it's also kind of post-apocalyptic. It's more like on the environmental side. It has to do with, um, with global warming. Um, this little girl, she wakes up in this little 
this little, uh, I don't even know what you call it, like this little tube that's keeping her alive. And her father, for some reason, has had to go off on a mission, she thinks. So when she comes out of it, he's also left her on a mission to uh, some plant some seeds wherever there's land. She's completely surrounded by water, and she has to, you know, complete her mission, try to find her father, and all with the help of a little bear. This little bear, Wexler, he's like an android with artificial intelligence, and he's there as her protector and her helpmate to try to get her to, to complete her mission. And it's been a dope story so far. It's probably been um, the biggest comic book that come out since, uh, you know, the Department of Truth. So the last issue that came out, you know, it created, you know, a little bit of a storm. A lot of variants were out. People were just trying to snap them up. I saw that some of the prices on eBay were, you know, going, they weren't like exploding, but they were rising. So I felt like a good smart thing to do would be pick up extra copies. So I did pick up a lot of copies of issue number one. Um, a lot of the different variants. The only one of the variants that I didn't get is I did not get the 1 in 100 um, variant, but I got all the rest of them. And I have, uh, I think I have a couple of them that are on, in the mail. I did not get the second printing, which I thought that my comic book shop would have that today, but they didn't get the second printing of the number one issue. Hopefully it comes uh, like on Thursday or Friday to them. If not, I'll be looking to try to pick that up, you know, in the mail. But this is... The main cover, this is actually, yeah, this is the main cover. This is cover A. And like I said, I picked up a couple of different copies of this one. And that may be something that's featured in um, in one of my giveaways. I've been kind of stockpiling and letting time go by. So once I get to um, at least a thousand subscribers, then I can do some giveaways and you know and make it a, a little bit more beneficial to watch my channel. Um, in in between time, in the meantime, go ahead and hit that like button, comment on the video, let me know what you think, let me know what you think about the comic books, what's going on in your world as far as comics go. Um, subscribe if you really dig in the channel and uh, hit the notification bell because I am picking up with consistency and adding more stuff to my channel as I go along, more content. So you know, keep checking me out. And this is a virgin cover of cover two, the variant cover. I didn't even realize that I had this one, um, actually. But that's pretty dope. My man Frank hooked me up. Appreciate you, Frank. So I'm definitely, definitely happy about having that in my box. And these are a couple of the regular covers as well. So, and it's the same thing. This, this cover is really dope. The cover is so dope that um that. Uh, Frank wasn't actually reading it and he walked by and he was telling me that he saw the cover and that's what attracted his attention to it. So he went ahead and read issue number one. I'm not sure if he actually read number two yet, but he did read number one and he's hooked into it now. So he thought the story was really great and that's what's dope. That's what's dope about this and I'm happy about these covers coming out like that. The only other covers that I think that are really smashing it um, like that is Bitter Root and you know, that's that whole bitter root series is definitely something that you want to check out if you haven't been checking that out so and last the last cover is the 1 in 25 variant this is uh, the young variant and that shows Eve and Lil Wexler sitting on the roof and if you can see the water is all around them but so yeah so I picked that one up as well definitely happy about getting that I got to my comic book shop um, right on time and you know got everything that I wanted except for that uh, white from black mask and hopefully that's in the mail but yeah this is that's what's in my bag this week so like I say hit me up let me know how you feel about the channel hit me in the comments tell me if you uh you know if you have any suggestions or if you have any comments or if you have any thoughts about any of the comic books that I'm reading or if there's something that you think that I should be reading that I don't have on my pull list you know, just communicate. Let's talk. Let's chat about it. Either way, I appreciate you for uh, spending a little bit of time with me. As always, continue to evolve because that's what we do at Evolutionary Comics. It's your man, Jay. I'll holla at you. As always, I want to thank you for joining me here on Evolutionary Comics. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Most definitely hit the notification bell so you can get new content whenever I drop it. 
But most of all, hit me up in the comments. I like to talk. So let's talk about comics and continue to evolve. And this is Evolutionary Comics and your man, Jay. Holla!